Uh, welcome everyone to Flex's Manufacturing Day 2022 webinar. I'm Kira Witten. I'm Flex's Vice President of Sustainability, and I'm really excited to have a conversation today with our special guest, Hui Tan, who is our President of Global Operations and Supply Chain. Welcome, Hui, and um, maybe tell us all a little bit about your background. Thank you, Kira. Hello, everybody. My name is Hui Tan. Thank you for having me today. Um, I said, I've been in the company 22 years. Um, and this company, or the family I call it, has enabled me to be in many disciplines. I started off as a test engineer in Milpitas. And right now, while I'm running global operations, it has enabled, enabled me to go visit all 113 factories that we have worldwide. And it, it, it is something deep inside me to see the transformation of the industry that we will be talking today. Um, looking forward to this conversation, Kira. Thank you. So Manufacturing Day is a U.S. event that's celebrated on the first Friday of October. Today, we're going to have a fireside chat between Hui and me, and we're going to focus on the future of manufacturing, what it means to be a responsible manufacturer, manufacturer, and then we're going to take a few questions from the audience. So let's get started. Uh, first, we want to talk about, you know, we're in the middle of what we call the fourth in industrial revolution or Industry 4.0. Um, Hui, tell us about how is modern manufacturing different from, you know, our legacy views of manufacturing and production? You can even see in my background kind of the, the differences between how people think about manufacturing and what it really looks like today. So for sure, Kira, if you look at your picture behind you, it shows manufacturing has definitely evolved. And the picture on your left definitely shows it was from the last century. And the one on the right is present day today. So many factories of the past and digital factories of the future, that's where, what we're gonna be talking about today. And I would say is this, everything is getting automated. And the next step right now is trying to connect them. And technologies like AI, Internet of Things, digital twin, simulations are fundamentally changing manufacturing. And when I say changing, it's the part, first part of where we are is getting automated, but at the same time connecting it. And connecting it drives smarter data that is deriving from what we get from the machines. Mm -hmm. And it also optimized the entire product life cycles and also spur innovation. And I'll also say this, new technologies are also enabling greater safety on the shop floor day to day. One of the biggest examples is, you know, ability to lift heavy stuff. We're using more robots and cobots that has a lot of ergonomic uh, benefits, and they're definitely safe for our environments. And I'll also say Industrial 4.0 creates opportunity for a better trained and more technical skilled workforce to ensure complex machinery operates seamlessly. And also free up people from having to do more mundane and repetitive work, and people are able to go focus on higher skill sets and more interesting jobs. So, so thanks, Hui, for giving us context on Industry 4.0. There's this idea that as we adopt these more advanced technologies and automate more processes, robots will uh, take away human jobs. How do you see Industry 4.0 affecting career opportunities and pathways in manufacturing? Sure, that's a great question because the thing is this. I, I personally believe is an urban myth that um, automation is going to replace jobs. Because at the end of the day, I can give you a few examples. It's not. On the contrary, it actually increases job. Manufacturing is a very vibrant industry. And in the US, we have double-digit growth since 2017. And the tap on industrial 4.0 full potential will need more technically skilled workers. And in particular, three categories that I'll say. The first one will be Automation for tax and engineering, IT solution architects, and data scientists. These three are the key uh, disciplines that will bring the industrial 4.0 and connect the dots and, and bring it to the next level. We at Flex today are at different phases, and I'll give you an example of where some of it is. And I give example today will be our favorite factory, Altifer, the Lighthouse Network site uses automation but it has not displaced workforce. 
Autofun Digital Factory has kept up with revenue growth of about 40% since 2017, but we have not displaced any headcount. In fact, the thing is we have increased an average of 8%. In the manufacturing space, we have a diverse set of customers and serve various industry that requires a lot of different factory capabilities. And what I will lead on and say is the ability of the workforce that we need to train and enable them to adapt to the ever upgrading skill sets that's needed for the industry. It's almost it's almost like it's just it's just going to continue to innovate and evolve. Uh, like many industries, right? Whereas technology has been introduced, the the work has changed and and manufacturing is no different. You know, when we look at the factory behind you, it's it's very clean, it's very advanced, and, and there's lots and lots of technology. And, and having visited that factory, you see a very diverse set of jobs that are on the floor as well as off the floor. So, um, you know, I, I do agree that that it it's changing. It's not necessarily going away. I, like you said, some things might change um, for the better around safety and repetition, but it just means that it's gonna be different and a diff, different opportunities. You know, we've talked about the different types of jobs um, that are going to be in demand, but how are you thinking about how to ensure these opportunities um, are equitable and accessible to a wider range of, of work, workers? It's a great question. And actually it connects to be, how do we stay viable to that, to that point? So when I say that there's a need for diverse breadth and skill set, um, is actually really adopting or adapting to changes, which is constantly upgrading to, and train the workforce, which is very key for us because in Flex, Flex is all about, yes, our biggest asset is the people, our workforce. Technology makes manufacturing uh, more equitable and accessible, enabling people of different abilities to do their job they couldn't previously do. And for sure, at Flex, we're committed to reskilling people and giving the opportunity to up their skill sets. I will give a, another example of my favorite site, Altofern, where we have the IoT Academy. We partner with universities on upscaling programs and very promising results that have shown. Because the thing is, in today, the Industrial 4.0 that they've implemented, they have not have improved safety. They have also have better quality, but also makes the job interesting and the redundancy and the risk of uh, losing people, that is just, as I said, not, uh, not a true reflection of what from the data that we saw because they actually grew their workforce by 8% and, and almost grew their revenue by 40%. And I will also say that 100% of the IT staff that when I said just now in terms of IT solution and IT architect people, which weaves very deeply with the manufacturing experts and the engineering staff to impl implement the advanced technologies that we have today. At many of our sites, we do have host classes on site with partnership college, and we have stipend from university. We also want to give uh, stipends and support to people who are, want to further their education and their skill set. And not only flex, I would say we also collaborate pretty deeply with all the local governments to enable us to do this too. And we are proud because what it does is we're not in it just for flex, we're in it for the entire workforce. And we're also doing our part in the community by upgrading people's skill set. I think it's an important point that you mentioned because it is, it's not just about the manufacturing jobs and, and what, what flex is doing within our four walls. But when you think about the service jobs around a factory, when you think about um, um, the various um, services and infrastructure that create secondary jobs to support the workers that are in our factory, it creates a full ecosystem of opportunity um, for the communities in which we operate. And, and so it's one of the things that I think is, is so cool about Flex is how how many of these places we operate where we are a significant employer and the ability to impact, you know, the whole community around the factory is, is something pretty, pretty special. 
Um, shifting gears a little bit as we talk about the community, um, one of the hot topics right now, and of course near and dear to my heart is sustainability. And there's definitely, as we see an increased scrutiny on businesses, sustainability programs, and of course, specifically around uh, environmental impacts and how what are business what's businesses' responsibility um, to um, to be able to make sure that we're not negatively impacting um, our world. Um, from your perspective and what you see around the world, what do you see as our responsibility as a manufacturer um, to the world to address um, you know climate crisis and and how do you think about how we approach? Uh, climate action. I think, Kira, this topic is totally dear to you. It's also <laughs> very important to me, and it's also our top priority at Flex. So sustainability from an operation perspective, I like to always apply the more pragmatic view and the right thing that we Flex would do. Now, and not only this, stakeholders are increasing, uh, increasingly interested in sustainability, including our consumers and also our investors. They also want to know who they partner with and who they choose their product to be built with. And that's important for Flex. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about the environment side. We have made big strides that includes a lot of things that we have to share today. So just to talk about 2021 key figures, we have about 14% reduction of scope one and two in greenhouse gas emission. This is something that I would say that Flex is leading the race. And then we have 95% of waste diverted from uh, landfill. And there are plenty of things that we can share in a different uh, time. We won't talk about a circular economy, that what we do for our customers, that's why we are their preferred uh, vendor. And when we talk about flex, we not only do our parts in manufacturing and operations, we also go all the way to our supply chain where we applied it to about 29% of preferred uh, suppliers today have set greenhouse gas emission reductions uh, targets and they're well on their way. And this is a journey, a collective journey. It's not a flex journey. It's not a customer journey. It's a collective journey to make it a better world. Thanks, Hui, for sharing that perspective on some of the milestones we've already hit on our, um, our goals for climate. And talking about sustainability overall, uh, as a company, we have had a really exciting uh, year um, as we've launched our 2030 strategy about a year ago. And that has included a pretty aggressive climate agenda that included joining the Science-Based Targets Initiative. We also announced net zero by 2040 uh, for our greenhouse gas emissions. And our commitments span um, Beyond our net zero commitment, we also are committed to achieving zero waste at half of our factories by 2025. We mentioned that we've already achieved um, a significant uh, amount of diversion of our waste from our facilities, so we're on the right track there. We're pretty excited about that, as well as we have some goals around reducing our water, especially in areas where we have some scarce supply. But our big focus also is on partnering with our supply chain. What we know is that we sit in a very important place between our suppliers as well as our customers in enabling us to make collective progress on our climate agenda. And so one of the things we're really excited about is the work that we're doing to enable our preferred suppliers to set their own greenhouse gas emission targets, which really just helps all of us. So really excited about the progress that we've made uh, in sustainability across the enterprise and really grateful to the work that we have achieved with our suppliers and our customers on our, our collective goals. So with that, we have some time for a few questions. So the first one we're going to ask, uh, Hui, this comes in for you, is do you have any insight as to where these these jobs that we've talked about that are being created, where are they going to be located? I think this is the question that I, I'm always asked at almost every town hall or every meeting. So I would say this, regionalization is not a slogan anymore. It's actually a snowball in motion. And I think it's going to keep growing and it's going to be everywhere. And it's, it's, it's part of the supply chain moving closer to where we are and where the need is. Hence, what it means for flex. It means greater demand for advanced manufacturing 
of our facilities in places that are closer to home, example in the US. But in the US for sure, we are also uh, short. We don't have as much labor as other places in the world. But what is that made up for? It's definitely made up for what we just explained earlier on in terms of better automation, better industrial 4.0, and where are these happening? I can tell you, at Flex, it's so it's exciting times that we are ramping to our biggest facilities, um, one in Austin and one in Buffalo, Buffalo Grove. We are actually building more than 100 million uh, CGM, or we call it continuous glucose monitoring devices annually. It's a great strive that what we, the team has achieved. That's that's fantastic to to hear and and uh, you know in addition we're also seeing growth in, in in other places that you would think of whether that's Europe or or even um, um, the rest of Asia so you know it's almost where are jobs not growing right now um, I know you're stretched for labor because we have um, just so many exciting opportunities with our customers and. Um, Let's move to our next question. Uh, what skill sets are needed for sustainability as this discipline continues to grow? So I'll take this one. Um, you know, as we're as we're seeing, I mean, it's starting with the consumer that consumers are demanding more um, um, environmentally friendly products, more sustainable products, um, and and the and as a result of that, that's driving change all the way through um, the supply chain. You know, 20 years ago, our sustainability team was operating in the background, just, you know, doing basic reporting um, on our environmental health and safety uh, programs. You know, today we have a, a, an attorney focused on labor. We have an environmental engineer uh, on the sustainability team. So in addition to more of program management roles, uh, we also have more technical roles as well, whether that's in the legal profession, finance, program management, um, and as well as environmental engineering. Um, and we do quite a bit, right? We're reporting out at all levels of the company up through the board of directors a couple of times a year. So um, this is a very visible program. It's getting a lot of attention from our investors, from our customers. And so our leaders are also really focused on this. Um, but what I would say is that the most important thing is, is the sustainability program has to be aligned to your business strategy. Uh, it shouldn't be separate or different from what you're trying to achieve as a company. It all has to be aligned. So I think this is why it's so important for sustainability teams. You have to be able to work cross-functionally uh, across the organization and stay um, very connected to the business. Um, so lots of opportunities uh, in the area of sustainability, whether they're technical or not. Um, I think we are gonna see this continue to grow. Unfortunately, this is all the time we have today. Uh, Hui, do you have any final words for people who are interested in a career in manufacturing or learning more about our industry? Thank you, Kira. Manufacturing for sure is going through a fundamental transformation and change. Thus, it's going to be a very exciting time to be part of this industry. And with the amount of technology that is opening up today, this is where the change in career, the adoption of change, and the career opportunities are meant. I sincerely invite everybody to take this opportunity. One, as we said earlier through, with me and Kira, to upgrade their skill sets. But at the same time, it's going to be a very exciting journey for the manufacturing community and for Flex. Thank you so much, Hui. And thank you so much for all of you for joining our Manufacturing Day webinar. It's a wonderful industry, as Hui said. It's so exciting to be able to um, shape the future of manufacturing. And as Ravithi, our CEO, has said, you know, there's just something magical about watching a product get made. And that's one of the most uh, rewarding things about being in manufacturing is physically seeing something uh, come to life uh, on, a, on a factory floor. So if you're interested in learning more about Flex's manufacturing positions, uh, we encourage you to visit our careers page on flex.com for more details. Thank you so much. Thank you.